All right, welcome back to episode six, which is the same night as episode five ended. So uh, we're just installing the bomb rack assembly. Turn this fan off real quick. It's too loud. So Scott made this freaking awesome bomb rack. So this is all held on with magnets. Magnet on the end, magnets on the ends. And that's the bombs held with magnets Oops. to the rack. And the rack is held with magnets. <laughs> this guy kills me. I can't do stuff like this. I literally can't. This is why I love Scott. He has the ability. Oh, on the tail hook, magnets, cowling, magnets. The uh, antennas, magnets. So Scott made this tail hook, which I've actually never fitted to the airplane. You see the little baby magnet over there. Little baby magnet right there. Let's see. Oh, that's right. This slides in here. I think. Oh yeah, the slot's a little small. Anyways, I'll have to figure that one out. But uh, that's held on, and I don't remember what goes here. Metal loss. Oh, that's the original, I need to cover that up, put a little metal patch over that. This is the original tailwheel location, and Scott made the scale location right here. This is just an access panel to get to the steering, which Scott also did. And tail cone. Also magnets, so you can access all the uh, flight control stuff. Pretty awesome. <laughs> Scott and his magnets. So anyways, I just got the uh, bomb mount done. You need to paint all this stuff, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I need to put the uh, exhaust ports in, which Scott also made. Check these puppies out. These are metal exhaust pipes, dual layer. So it's like a insulation outer layer. All made by hand. These will glue right in. Just got to paint them. Scott, you're a madman. And I love it. Anywho, so we're working on that. Um, also, I'll show you some of the other stuff. So Scott handmade this. I believe it's a 30 cal that goes in the back. It'll be stowed in the down position since that's how they would have flown it. Taking off and all that stuff. So that's how we're going to have it displayed. We have the uh, dive bombing scope here, which will get glued in. This goes through the front windscreen, which is pretty cool. But again, Scott made all this stuff by hand out of plastic. And uh, made this uh, scale tail wheel. I need to glue that in still with some JB weld. Got to do that. So once I get all the stuff on the bottom all sorted out, I'll uh, get the canopies glued on. Um, actually, I'll probably glue those later so I don't smash them. Because flipping it upside down and all that stuff tend to hurt stuff. So I'm going to get this bomb rack done and painted, get the bomb painted, and get the panel lines on it, finish the weathering, all that stuff. So finish the weathering on the motor, need to install the exhaust ports couple other smaller things but that's where we're at for right now yeah check out this this rack or this sling it's not functioning but it's uh it's pretty awesome all details made out of plastic magnets and look at that freaking awesome magnets on the ends <laughs> and scott made this bomb from a water bottle The man possesses skills that I do not, and I'm glad. I can paint stuff good, I can do stuff like that, but I can't do this detail stuff. I mean, I guess maybe I could if I really, really put effort into it, but I just don't have the patience and uh, the talent for doing some of this real small stuff like this. Anyway, since we're ever going to keep going on this, and uh, also, um, <clears throat> these bombs were yellow apparently, which is interesting. 
So I won't paint it bright yellow. I'll probably paint like a dirty, dark yellow paint chipped and stuff. But uh, the picture of the airplane, it is yellow, and the documentation I have also says that they were yellow. So we're going to go with yellow. And uh, that's where we're at, so we'll keep going. We'll check back in in a little bit. All right, so doing this as an example, what not to do and what to do. So I'm marking out the panel ends. In this case, these are the uh, ribs for the fabric covering. Um, I mentioned earlier about not overdoing it. This would be overdoing it because you're not going to walk up to an airplane and see this. But you will see faint, um, you know, faint panel lines. In this case, you'll see like little ribs for the fabric. Um, <clears throat> so what I did here was I actually, this all looked the same. Once I got done doing the panel lines, or the lines, with a pencil. And I rubbed the pencil in with my hands. I want to see how it looked. And it, if you use a smaller pencil, it works pretty well actually, but... Being is that this is Depron foam, you can puncture super easy, so I can't use a really sharp pencil. So, using a regular pencil and then smudging it, well, it was too much, obviously. It's way, way too dark. So, what I did was I take a rag with some, uh, with some Windex on it, and I rub what's, what's on there off. Now, you're not, not going to take it all off, but what it left behind was, and you can take as much off as you want. Um, I left a little bit there. Because from a distance, take a look, and you can still see that it's there, but it's not too much. And you can see how big this wing is with my hand. I've got huge hands, so it's a huge wing. But anyways, so that's a weathering tip um, if you're going to use pencil. Um, another thing is I'll show you later when I'm doing the, uh, the oil streaks and the dirty spots with the water-based paints. I'll use kind of the same technique. If it's too much, I can wipe some of it off. Um, so yeah, like I said earlier, I'm not going to get carried away because a lot of times you don't really see panel lines and stuff on airplanes. You see access panels, stuff like that, but you won't see all the panel lines unless you get up really close to the airplane. So the whole idea behind scale modeling is to make it look as realistic as possible. And I think as modelers, we get this idea that uh, we'll put panel lines and then we'll just airbrush all of them and... You know, it'll look cool, which I guess can kind of be true. That's how I used to do it when I first started weathering. Um, if you want some really good weathering tips, go to the RC Geek. Uh, he has a number of really great videos on how to properly weather. In fact, I learned a lot of what I know, most of what I know from him. So, anyways, this is a neat little technique to get uh, faint yet obvious lines. I use the same technique on my sky ray this is all pencil and then it's hard to tell in this lighting but I rubbed all the lines and it gives gives just enough difference in color to where it almost looks like it's airbrushed but it's actually not that's actually just smudged uh, pencil so anyways I've used this technique a number of times now and it works pretty well I did the same thing on my P80 and I can see we got some oil stains and stuff here but the panel lines are all done with pencil so, you don't want to look too plain, but you don't want it to look like that. You don't want to just like take black airbrush and go over all the lines, because then, as I like to say, it looks like you flew through a coal mine. So, we're not flying through any coal mines today. We are a coal mine free aviation hangar here. So, keep it coal free, people. Keep it clean. So, anyways, that's a little weathering tip. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep marking these out. I'm not going to do all the, there's not a ton of panel lines that I have access to as far as what's really there, um, but I do want to mark out all the stringers for the fabric, which as you can tell on the fuselage, the whole aft fuselage is fabric, the whole aft wing section is fabric, all the flight controls, so on the fuselage I'm going to try and do some shading to help give the impression that it's fabric. But anyway, so we're going to keep going here and I'll check back in a little bit and I'll show you how it looks when I'm all done with the bottom of the wing. All right, so uh, I think you finished up the panel lines in the bottom. Okay, zoom back a little bit here. So obviously you can see them. They're dirty, but they're not overbearing. 
in the sun these will look pretty clean actually so that's the one thing that I can suggest and it's something that my friend Chris Wolf taught me was you never weather a model with natural light so you never do it in the sunshine um, it's best to do it under artificial lighting because when it looks like it's, uh, it's enough it will be you go outside and it's not overdone if you do it in natural light then it looks good and you take it inside or on a cloudy day it'll look like way too much weathering so the key here is less is more um, the thing with this airplane is that there's not a lot of pictures of them like good pictures that show the weathering especially of a specific airplane so I'm kind of just like just winging it here no pun intended uh, yeah so you just kind of go with what you think looks right so and this being a Navy airplane being flown off of an island probably wasn't really ever cleaned and radial engine up front hydraulics in the wings lots of leaking stuff so they were flying these off of dirt strips so yeah you can imagine things got dirty now I will do some uh, water-based paint washes once the whole thing has panel lines on it I'll do all that and we'll show that but uh, it just really depends on the, on the plane like you look at my kefir for instance you can see panel lines but they're faint and they're not overdone so anyways we're gonna do similar uh, streaking like this on the bottom once we get all the panel lines down on the wing and the fuselage so bottom of the wings done so we're gonna flip it over and do the top okay so here's another little thing I'm doing so these are the wing walk areas now this is typically like a uh, like a sprayed on grippy surface almost like sandpaper so that way when you climb on top of the wing you don't slip and fall so what I've done here is actually use some sandpaper and sanded through a little bit of the black paint to make it look like it's worn through so I tried to make this paint splotchy you can see that to kind of give the same effect but it wasn't quite enough so we're going with this what's funny is that this is actually really smooth now and this is rough unlike what it would be like in real life but anyways so we're just kind of giving the um, illusion that it's been worn through from walking on the wings so and do some panel lines and maybe even do some like I sanded off some of this back here what I might do is hit these with like silver paint so it looks like it's bare metal and I'll probably do that around the back of the wing and the front of the wing where you would have gotten up on on the airplane so I'd imagine they probably hopped in the tire and hopped onto the wing like you do on a uh, p51 that's what I would imagine because it's a pretty tall airplane although they did have the steps on the back side by the wing fillet so that's probably how they got up but there's also a step in the front of the airplane, so they would probably hit a tire, then grab that footwell, and then get up. But the crew members and the pilots would also walk on the wings. So, anyways, let's get to this panel lines here. All right, so here's an example of a unmarked wing versus the panel lined and slightly dirtied wing. So again, it's there, but it's not overpowering and that's what you're really going for a little bit too plain cool because it's got the different fading and stuff but this just gives it a little bit extra but don't get crazy and then I uh I sand it down both of the wing lock areas a little bit I think once I do all the paint and I did sand it off some of the paint up here because they would have slid down the front of the wing or drug their legs up onto it or whatever so I'll put some silver paint in there make it look like it's bare metal uh, but I think once we do all the paint chipping and I'll probably do like uh, some zinc chromate spots where it looks like exposed zinc chromate where the paint just chipped off not paint and primer I'll probably do some stuff like that so I think once the whole thing has panel lines and I get paint chips done and oil streaks and exhaust stains I think it's gonna look pretty cool so anywho we'll keep going all right, so uh, I think I'm done with the panel lines and such. Man, the light's really bleaching out a lot of this detail. So there's a lot of shading. Yeah, it's still hard to see it. So I'll do the best I can. Um, basically, what I've done is 
these are all pencil pencil lines that I've uh, rubbed by finger and then I've used a uh, little rag with some uh, with some water on it and uh, actually Windex and I've just kind of like rubbed it till it looks about the way I want it to look um, again this is in artificial light so outside a lot of this stuff you won't even be able to see it'll just you'll see it but it won't be very obvious which is a good thing so let me get uh, why is this not focusing so you can see that I've kind of rubbed it down um, I don't know if you've ever been to a tropical island but uh, in this like the southern South Pacific Islands like Midway um, I spent a little bit of time on them and uh, I will say that it rains a ton <laughs> and so I was trying to reduce the uh, the pencil markings and so in some spots I wiped them down to simulate like uh, rain washing stuff down so anyways the wings are done kind of the same thing try not to overdo it you can see them but it's not like oh my gosh there's huge lines everywhere wow it looks so much different in person compared to the screen I try to make it darker and it's closer to real that it loses focus but anyways that's where we're at um, I'm gonna try something I'm gonna attempt masking off these one at a time and just doing a real light super thinned out like white to try and simulate shading from the the ribbed fabric so honestly I think this looks pretty good but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it <clears throat> see how it looks worst case I can try and wipe it off so I'm gonna have to make it really thinned out so it's not uh... actually I might even try a darker color to simulate the top portion shadowing so anyways that's where we're at and uh... There we go. It's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Need to <clears throat> get this show on the road here. I've got pretty much a week left to work on it. I'm going to be gone for most of that. So, anywho, let's uh, keep on trucking. Okay, so uh, even I'm kind of shocked <laughs> how this looks. This looks fabric covered. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I've never done this before. Um, I know John was really big on... Um, like weathering with masking tape and doing different colors and stuff. I haven't really done too much of that. And uh, I've definitely never tried to simulate fabric. And, and it looks better in person, but it's like an optical illusion. I mean, doesn't that look like it's ribbed? Like it's fabric covered? This is crazy. This is crazy stuff. So I'm going to do the rudder a little bit too and see if I can't. It's going to be hard to simulate the stuff on the horizontal surfaces like the uh, wings and the tails, but I'm pretty blown away. I mean, that's crazy. And I'm, I'm you're just using white, and I'm, it's thinned way out, and I'm just kissing across that line of tape. So I already sprayed this one. Let's pull it off so you can... I love how it looks through the the blue on here. Wow, that's trippy. Well, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, sorry guys, I'm just kind of geeking out over here. All right, let's uh, keep on cruising. Okay, so I'm uh, doing the rudder right now. And I figured I'd try and show you guys how I do it. So you just, uh, I've already put all the lines down where the ribs would be. Um, I just want to show you just what this takes, I mean, you literally just kiss this thing with paint. So, kiss it like you're kissing your sister. And just be aware that, uh, let's see, went too far. Most paints look different after they're dried. So, check that out from, from a distance. Crazy, right? And it looks looks better in person. It's really it looks really bright right now for whatever reason through the through the screen. But uh, yeah, I'm like super pumped on this right now. It looks really cool. We'll keep on cruising. All right, so they got the uh, right side done. 
I mean, if you don't get close, five feet away, you would think this was fabric covered. Did the rudder, I did a little bit on the elevators, just kind of like in the middle between each rib, just did a little ghost of white. Not much else I can really do there. But uh, man, I'm pretty shocked at how, when you see this in per, on, on film, it might not look as convincing, but in person, if you just glance down at it, it looks like it's ribbed. It's crazy. Anyways, I'm still geeking out over here. So I'm going to do the other side of the airplane. <clears throat> I'm going to kiss the wings over there a little bit. Just then, uh, let's see, then we're going to do uh, probably some exhaust stains. Um, that should be it for weathering with paint. Well, I'm going to do some simulated paint chips and stuff up around the cockpits and on the wings and access panels and things like that. But I'm not going to get too carried away because that can kind of make it look kind of cheesy. So I'm just going to do a little bit of that, but uh, man, I'm pretty pumped on this right now. Okay, so I thought this was an interesting comparison. The wing on the right, I've done a, just a little bit of uh, white throughout the fabric areas. The left one I haven't done yet. So it's just the tiniest amount. I mean, I'm just barely putting anything on. But look at the depth that it's added to that surface compared to this one. Not that this one looks bad, but I think this one's uh, far more convincing of being fabric covered so pretty pumped all right so um here's the model all put together and i think it's pretty convincing now i'll be the first to tell you that uh my models are mostly what i like to call five footers ten footers Sometimes 20 footers. Meaning that they look good from a distance. That still holds true here. <laughs> it looks pretty good from from five feet away. It looks pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. But uh you know, I have friends like Chris Wolf who uh the closer you get, the more amazing his models look. They look great from a distance and they get closer, and then you just get more blown away by all the details. Mine are the opposite. The closer you get, the more you realize how not amazing I am at certain things <laughs> but uh yeah from five feet it looks pretty dang pretty dang sweet so I just got done airbrushing the exhaust stains which turned out pretty good it's gonna be dark on this side um so I'm I think I'm all done with the airbrush so I need to do some paint chipping and some oil streaks underneath um, but it's getting to the point now where, uh, the, the weathering is pretty, pretty saturated. So I'm kind of getting to that point where I got to just rip it off like a bandaid and just quit. But, uh, yeah, pretty stoked on how this is turning out. Definitely a huge fan of the simulated fabric. I think it looks really cool. Uh, it looks better in person. It's still... Still kind of washed out in the video, but anyways, I'm just looking at this thing and this wing is gigantic. It's going to fly so good. <laughs> Eight and a half pounds. Unbelievable. That's uh, pretty much what my little Hornet over there weighs. Eight and a half pounds. And this has, I don't know, triple the wing area, something like that. Anyways, pretty stoked. I got to do some dry brushing on the motor. Dry brushing on some of the uh, stuff on the inside of the cockpit. Um, I need to do the instrument panel still. Just lots of little stuff now. I got to paint the hook. I got to paint the bomb rack and the bomb. Uh, but I would say that the uh, lion's share of the work is complete. Have to glue the canopies on still. Reinstall the landing gear. Do a bunch of stuff like that. So we're getting down to the wire here. And like I said earlier, I won't be home hardly well, I won't be home at all this next week so I'm getting home Friday night maybe Saturday morning then the kids have soccer games and then it's gonna be busy so I'm taking the day off before I leave for St. George so I've got uh, a full day before I leave to finish everything up charge batteries uh, give everything once over plus I know I keep saying I'm not gonna do any more foamies but 
there's a lot of room right here, you know, there's a lot of extra space. And uh, somebody twisted my arm, won't mention his name, but I uh, ended up getting another Venom. So, if you remember my old Venom, I did it in a uh, Edwards Air Force Base experimental, just like a white test scheme. And it was, man, I love that airplane. So, I got another one, because I don't think they're going to be around much longer. I think they stopped making them, so, anyways. I got to throw that together, throw a quick white paint job on it, and some decals. Oh, it's going to have so many airplanes in my car. It's going to be ridiculous. Anyways, back to the Vindicator. Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty stoked. Now, like I said, on a on a video or a quick pass by, you think, oh, man, this thing's totally wicked. And it is, but you get closer and you start to realize that my fastener patterns aren't exactly the same and panel lines aren't perfect and stuff like that so i see that stuff maybe you guys don't but i don't have the patience or the uh the time really to make this thing perfect 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 so we're going for the uh it's good for five feet looks awesome kind of a deal here so anyways let's uh get back to detailing here it's getting late so we'll check back in a little bit all right so next step completed I uh, did some paint chipping with uh, silver paint and a small brush. Um, did some dry brushing on the motor. Again, this is a good example of looks good from back here. You think, wow, that's super cool. You get close, you're like, eh, eh, maybe not that great. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm my own worst critic. But, um,. Yeah, so the whole idea behind this is to create uh, like paint chips, like exposed bare metal with the silver. So uh, anywhere there's a moving part or a access panel that's accessed frequently, um, metal panels with sharp edges. So when you pull a panel in and out of an airplane, uh, you set the panel down, the corners get dinged up, um, the edges of a panel opening get dinged up putting the panel back in stuff like that walking across it things of that nature or even just like you know sliding across the surface to get in your clothes rubbing on it will rub the paint off and back then the paint i think they use in these is pretty thin probably didn't stick that great so yeah i mean there really is no science to this you just kind of gotta go with what you think looks good um did some dry brushing in here nothing too crazy just areas that would have been touched a lot or rubbed on a lot or move a lot so and you have uh things like the scoop that stick out in the airstream getting hammered by sand and stuff climbing in and out of the airplane rub it up against the wing uh the wing fold obviously these little panels will be moving a lot if the wings are being folded um, canopy rails, metal, you know, these things would have been pretty much paint free after a while. So, but again, I'm, I'm really at the point where the weathering is pretty saturated. So if you keep adding more and more stuff, it just becomes too much. So you have to, uh, really just know when to take a step back and look at it and think to yourself, is this far enough? You know, have I done too much? A lot of times there's not much reversing that if you have so it's better to think you've done enough take a step back and look see what you think if you think it's good you can keep on moving so I think this is good I'm gonna stop right here I can always add more later on if I want to I'm not gonna clear coat this model for weight savings and also allows me the ability to uh, fix panel lines and weathering and stuff in the future if I need to so that's where we're at. Um, I think all it's left to do for weathering is to flip it over and do some simulated oil stains and stuff of that nature. So it's getting late. It's almost 12 o'clock. So I'm going to hammer that out real quick and then I'm going to go to bed. So be back in just a minute. All right. So here's the bottom. <clears throat> like I said, you, you kind of got to know when to stop. So um, basically what I've done is I've used some water-based paints. Uh to try and simulate oil 
or dirt. Uh, in the case of this airplane, they were flying off of the island of Midway, so probably not the best environment. Lots of dirt, mud, lots of rain. You know, these airplanes are being kept outside, uh, middle of war, so, you know, oil leaks and hydraulic leaks and mud, rain, everything else. You kind of just got to take a look at where the airplane is being used, what it was being used for, the conditions it was being used in, etc. So, but again, it's already pretty dirty just from the pencil lines and everything else, so I didn't want to get too crazy, so I did some... Some oil streaking and maybe some mud slash hydraulic fluid. Um, then in some areas, I just kind of like put some in the middle of the panel and just kind of like smear it around and rub it off and kind of I did some right here and on the sides. Just kind of changes the hue of the paint. So, anyways, you can see I did you know a little bit of fading on the paint. A little, and even though this is, a, this is on the bottom, I still try to simulate the fabric. Um, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I think that is it for the night. I'm going to call that a wrap for the night. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that the painting is pretty much done. Aside from the bomb, the bomb rack, and the painting a prop, and finishing the landing gear few things left but uh yeah i would say for the most part pretty much done so hope you guys enjoyed it i know i'm starting to really like how this thing's looking pretty excited to get it finished and get it flown so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next episode